Hey guys, welcome back to the screen. I'm Charlotte. I'm Emily. I'm Erica. We hope you've been enjoying our episode so far and liking, commenting, and sharing with your friends. If you've missed any of them, head on over to our channel and watch. And if you're not already, be sure to subscribe while you're there. This week, we will be bringing you updates on a few important past issues, so be sure to stick around and follow us once again as we join together via Skype to bring you conversations through the screen. Episode, we will be discussing what's new with uh, some of the past topics that each of us felt the most connected to, including mass shootings, the fur trade, and climate change. We will also be bringing you updates from Taiji, discussing a heartwarming story about what a popular car service did to help animals, and finally sharing our thoughts on this week's episode of Pretty Little Liars. First up, a few special topic throwbacks. This week, we chose to review some of the most influential topics to each of us that we have already discussed in previous episodes. So we intend to provide a general update and inform you of anything new or relevant that has happened with each of our chosen show effects. Um, so back in episode 11, the big topic was mass shootings. Um, the girls talked about some of the statistics of mass shootings and how easy it is to purchase a gun. For example, it's so easy for a gun to be in the hands of someone that's not exactly stable. I find that a lot of mass shootings are definitely linked with mental health. I found a website just to give me an idea of how many mass shootings there have been since this episode, and I ended up scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling because of how many there has been. I've noticed when reading about mass shootings, the media often focuses on the killer's past, their current situations, where they're from, which I find happens the most. I feel like nowadays when a mass shooting occurs, the first question out of someone's mouth is, what was their nationality or what was their religion? I'm currently living in Canada and there has been a huge amount of killings that are being investigated by the Guns and Games Unit. It's so easy for people to get a hold of a gun and most of the shootings are happening because there is instability within these people. Either people grow up feeling alone, un unaccepted, abused, and people, of course, struggle with that. They run to the wrong things or the wrong crowd and struggle. It is so important for children, youth, and adults to be getting the help they need because with the rate it's currently going, mass shootings won't come to an end unless the root issue is truly dealt with. So back in episode 14, we brought you some of the cruelties of the fur industry, and in that discussion, we mentioned that China, as well as some European countries, um, such as Denmark, were the main producers uh, in the fur trade. Um, however, last month, PETA actually released the findings of a two-month investigation from a fur farm in Wisconsin, and what they found was just absolutely disgusting. Um, so this particular fur farm is a producer of mink and fox fur, and the main way these animals were killed was through gassing, and they made these like makeshift um, gas chambers out of what looked like the top of a barbecue grill, and they would put the animal inside and use dirty gas from a running engine um, to basically suffocate the animal inside of the chamber. Um, sometimes it would take up to 20 minutes for the animal to die, and sometimes it didn't work, leading to the farmers breaking their necks to finish the job. Um, some of the foxes were also bred to continue the fur farming, and one fox actually refused to breed, and a farmer um, admitted to forcibly taking the animal's sperm, much like the trainers do with the orcas at SeaWorld. Um, so when I learned about this, I was just absolutely disgusted, and, you know, here I was thinking that cruel things this cruel only happened overseas. You know, we hear all these things about, you know, the dog meat trade and everything in China, and here this is happening in Wisconsin. 
So, you know, it just kind of goes to show you that these kinds of cruelties exist everywhere and we need to do something to stop them. So I'm going to link an article below about this particular fur farm and there is a video which you can choose to watch or not. It's obviously very graphic. Um, I actually couldn't even bring myself to watch it. Um, but there's also a pledge you can sign to be fur free. But I mean, what it really goes back to is kind of knowing what you're buying and where it comes from. And even if something has a tag that says made in the U.S., it doesn't mean that it didn't come from a fur farm. And, um, you know, in Canada, we're seeing the seal slaughter, which we talked about. And, you know, that's also a really huge issue. So, you know, it's just important to remember that these animals need their fur and their skins a lot more than we do. We don't, I mean, we don't need them at all. Um, so, you know, it's just something to be aware of. So back in episode three, we discussed global warming or climate change and the impacts humans are having on this planet. We gave you a general overview of what it was and how we can go about correcting it. Well, since this episode, we have done significant research on the topic and learned so much more that many didn't know. One of those things we watched and learned from is the documentary Cowspiracy. This documentary goes in-depth into the hidden world of animal agriculture, how the very things we eat every day are the leading contributing factors to global warming, but it, physically, but it is physically impossible to convince every single person to give up meat and dairy and become vegan in order to stop the cowspiracy. Uh, but what we do ask is that you consider going without these things one day a week, uh, which we Leads me to the other inspirational documentary we watched, Racing Extinction, which speaks of just changing one thing in your daily life because it can make an impact on the bigger picture. And as far as the actual climate goes in each region of the United States, for example, um, we all kind of had different types of um, winters than we normally would have in a regular year. Um, many contribute that to the jet stream, the El Nino, um, but really uh, it all comes down to a significant factor of many different things, and climate, climate change is, of course, a factor. In so um, for me, uh, last year I was buried in about 104 inches of snow, and this year, uh, just today, had my most recent significant snowstorm. Um, but we only got about a foot of snow, so it's not too, it's still not comparative to last year by any means whatsoever at this time. Um, for Emily, she's still dealing with a drought, which has been ongoing for several years now that she's been dealing with it. Um, it was said to hopefully be reversed this year with the El Nino by hopefully, because an El Nino year typically drops a lot of rain, um, in the California area, but it has not so far this year. And um, California is said to have needed two times the amount of a regular El Nino year to reverse some of the drought. And it is definitely not going to happen this year. It's just not feasibly possible. Um, I mean, it is possible to maybe reverse it in small doses, but it's not going to be a quick fix like they were hoping it would be. Um, and just mainly for the South, it's been... Um, they've sort of been, because the jet stream is so low, and it's kind of, like, gone like this in the southeast, mostly. It's kind of fueling a lot of storms that way, and then working its way up the coast. Whereas last year, it was just coming straight at us. It wasn't going, like, down, you know, south first, and then coming up. I feel like that's, the, that's kind of, like, a big difference, too, this year. Is, um, it's going in warmer, you know, temperatures and warmer waters before it works its way up here. And in the process, it kind of brings warm air with it because I've had above average winter for the most part this year. Um, so I would just like, I and of course the others would like to hear how you feel about each topic. You know, what was the weather like in your area other winters before? You know, what did you learn in the fur trade that's new? What would you like to also contribute in that? And um, if anything with mass shootings, is there anything, you know, that has happened in your country recently that you would like to talk about? and you would like to share, please comment below because we would love to hear about them. This past weekend, Taiji held a mixture of emotions. Starting with January 27th, there was no slaughter on this day. However, a small pod of four Pacific 
white-sided dolphins, a rare find for this hunting season, were driven into the cove. This day was all about greed, and all four were selected for a life in captivity. On a more positive note, January 28th and 29th and February 1st were all Blue Cove days. However, we also saw quite a few Red Cove days. On January 30th, a pod of 16 to 18 striped dolphins were slaughtered after many had escaped the push into the cove. January 31st saw the slaughter of about six riso dolphins, and February 2nd and 3rd both saw the slaughter of a pod of risos. Finally, on February 4th, we saw the captive selection of three bottlenose dolphins while the rest of the pod was slaughtered. Luckily, we are in the last month of the hunting season, so be sure to check out the live streams below to see what's happening in Taiji for yourself. And also be sure to share with your friends to help prevent another season this September. Now some good news for Rick Berry. Early this morning, it was announced that he was finally freed from a Japanese detention facility and deported from Japan. Oberry was held for 19 days during which he lost 22 pounds and suffered a minor chest problem. Obviously, we are glad he is now free, but the fight against Taiji is far from over. So we encourage you to all keep using your voice to bring their horrible practices to an end. So some of you may know, some of you may not, but this past weekend was Charlotte's birthday. And her and I actually celebrated in San Francisco. Um, it was her first time there, and I always love going there. But um, we fit a lot of sightseeing into two days. So, you know, being there without a car, we relied a lot on Uber to get around the city. Um, and it was actually my first time not using, not in an Uber, but kind of, you know, um, ordering and figuring everything out. And I found it to be super convenient and useful, um, as I know a lot of people do. You know, Uber is kind of the big thing right now. Um, so Uber is actually was actually doing something really awesome um, to help celebrate the Super Bowl. And so this brings us to our heartwarming story this week. So this past Wednesday, Uber partnered with Animal Planet's Puppy Bowl and um, was actually delivering puppies through the car service. So basically a person would log onto the Uber app and select puppies and for $30 a dog would be delivered to them for 15 minutes of playing or cuddling. Um, unfortunately the service was only available in select big cities and those included Chicago, Washington DC, Los Angeles, New York, Phoenix, and San Francisco. Um, <clears throat> however the best part of this story is that Uber is working with the Humane Society so if anyone got attached to their furry friend, they would be available for adoption. Um, and actually last year, Uber found homes for 70 dogs. And on top of that, Animal Planet agreed to match delivery fees from each visit to support um, participating animal shelters and rescues. So um, I was actually following this story throughout the day on Wednesday, and it was even trending on Twitter. Um, so I got to see everyone's adorable puppy photos, and um, some people were actually even disappointed because um, there weren't enough puppies to go around. But I just think it was a really awesome idea on Uber and Animal Planet's part, and uh, you know, just what a great way to adopt out animals and raise money for shelters. This week for our entertainment, we chose to watch, of course, Pretty Little Liars and the new episode, which was episode 14, I believe, was the number, um, of season 6B. So, basically, we learned, um, I feel like each episode we kind of were giving, given, like, one little hint as to what is to come for the rest of the season, and, um, we learned that the, the the source or the devil or whoever the heck is the new A um, is is still like is texting the girls and threatening them in new ways now more grown up ways just kind of being like taking digs at their you know personal lives and things like that um, and all the girls let basically let their significant others in on the secret right away. Um, they didn't, didn't try and hide it from anybody this time. They just let them, you know, all in on the secret, basically said, you know, this is what's going on. And except for, um, Hannah, she didn't really give Jordan the, the full detail of it. Um, 
Probably because he's not familiar with the background of the story, so she probably be a long scare story. Him away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas Caleb and you know, I think what Ezra did it, did Arya tell Ezra or I don't did she think try so. and tell Ezra or something? Because uh, he's not. Well, anyway, he's not around, we, we know that Caleb knows, and yeah. Caleb obviously played a huge role in it in the past, so. It's nice to have him kind of come back and be like that computer tech guy that they needed again. Um, we also learn that Ashley was the one who ends up saving Hannah again by taking the backup drive to the security footage for the Radley. Um, I, I always want to say the Radley Hotel, but they don't call it the Radley it's Hotel. The Radley. <laughs> Just the Radley, so I always want to I always want to add something to it, but I can't. It's annoying, kind of annoying, but oh well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I the, feel I, I mean I get that she's you know saving Hannah, but I feel like I was I'm like, didn't you learn from Wilden? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just like, oh my gosh, I don't I don't know what how that's gonna go, but and then she goes back to drinking. Uh, she thinks she's drinking scotch. I'm like, didn't you learn from the wine? <laughs> she just doesn't learn. <laughs> doesn't say she really doesn't. And of course, we also thought we also saw the return of Holly in a flashback, which for was five very seconds. exciting for us. Um, even though it was only a five minute flashback, it was still cool to see her back and to know that she really is integrated in the story to come. Um, especially with Byron and his shady dealings that he likes to have going on. It's interesting to find out what that's going to be this time around. Um, I actually have a theory, but I mean, I don't want to share it because I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it just in case it does come true. I don't want to ruin it for people and then be like, oh, I saw a spoiler about it and that girl ruined it. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to keep it to myself for right now, but I, I, I'll tell them just so that they know if they <laughs> Out, but um, I so, won't ruin it for everybody else. So, okay, yes. a couple things about this is that I don't, I, I don't know if I like where they're going with Ella. Just the fact, like I, they're they're saying that she went to go visit Charlotte while she was in Bradley or where I guess the sana whatever sanitarium she was at. But yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if I like where they're taking it. I do hope that they actually show that scene to us or, you know, something. Um, Holly has hinted that, you know, she's definitely going to be in the coming episode, so get ready. So I'm both scared and excited for that. But um, I don't know. I don't know where they're trying to go with her character because it, did, it, did, it kind of seemed out of character for her personally to be visiting Charlotte, but... Um, I mean, I don't know where we're, where we're going to go with that. Um, but the other thing that bothered me was that Marlene is once again <laughs> making Byron suspicious. And I feel like she does that all the time. She makes someone seem suspicious, then she takes it away. Then she makes them seem suspicious again. Like, she's she's done that with Ezra, which she's doing now, too, is that she's trying to make Ezra suspicious again. So it's like, Marlene, make up your mind. Is this person suspicious or not? <laughs> Like, it drives me nuts. And speaking of repetition, we're also seeing all of the girls kind of referring to the new A as being Sarah. And, you know, we're over here thinking that, you know, Marlene always is jerking us around and making us think that a certain person is A. And it's like, come on, Marlene, we're not that stupid. We know that it's not Sarah. Whatever grudges she has, I wish she'd just get over it and go away. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, and then, you know, we're also seeing these new couples. We're seeing Toby, we meet Toby's girlfriend, um, and then we find out that he didn't end up proposing to her, um, for whatever reason, possibly because of Spencer or, you know, what, whatever it may we have been. We also know that, too, that she is, like, Spencer's family's opposition or something. Like, yeah. like, she's on the, like, she's the daughter of. Her mother is opposing side or whatever yeah. in this whole political battle that her mother is about to partake in. And so that's kind of interesting, too, to see that, like, not only does she have, like, Toby and, like, Spencer always talks about how, like, she got a chair and, and he's building her a house. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, now it's like, 
now she's going to get the ring, and I didn't, you know, so it's kind of like, oh, crap, what's going to happen there? Yeah. Especially now that they see Caleb in the mix, too, because now it's like, holy crap, what's going to happen to the bromance? Is that going to affect Toby and Caleb's relationship down the line? Because they already, like, it appeared to have, like, had something to do with Hannah and Spencer, and then, like, it kind of backed off a little, and Hannah was like, no, you know what, it's okay, like, I'm, I'm okay, I can deal with it, but... I don't know. I, I something tells me it's not going to be that easy with Toby. Right. Yeah. It's, it seems like that. And then we're we're also seeing that Brina as well. Although that was kind of ruined with Arya stealing the key and sneaking into Ezra's apartment. But um, I feel like we're probably going to end up seeing more of that. Emily's probably going to have this big apology, or I don't know, something that Marlene's going <laughs> to think up. But um, I'm kind of find it interesting because. It was always, like, all the girls were always apologizing to Emily. Like, they had always done something to Emily. Emily was always sort of, like, the victim. So it's kind of nice to see Emily kind of screw up and do something wrong. And now yeah. she is the one who has to be, you know, sorry for it. And she can't hide behind, you know, say, oh, you know, A made me do it or whatever. Because that would be, you know, she did that for her friend. So Yeah. And one of the, the thing that I really love about the five years forward, I mentioned it before, but I just want to reiterate it, is the text on screen. Like, I love that. I think that's so cool how you just see it on the screen. And like when Spencer was getting mass texted by the girls, you see all these texts popping up. And I think it's just really cool to do it that way rather than just showing it on their phones. So I really, I really enjoy that. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much all the stuff for this week, so I'm looking forward to what's in store next week. So, as always, we encourage you guys to follow along with us and watch Pretty Little Liars on Freeform. It airs every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, or you can always um, download or stream any type of way you can possible, uh, iTunes or um, through any type of streaming network that carries it. I'm not sure if Hulu does. Um but I know that Xfinity offers it a day after if you are a Comcast provider, so you can watch it there or you can follow it. Usually airs the week um, the week prior usually airs before the newest episode, so at least you can always catch up with two episodes maybe and follow along with us if not. And um, always um, check in with us and see how we feel about the latest episode because it usually varies each week. But um, especially with it coming down to, you know, the last two seasons, we're definitely going to be really hard on, on you know, what what gets revealed and what, you know. We don't want to be asking questions for a long time either, guys. So we want these answers just as fast as you and we like to discuss them. So, um, again, yep, follow along with us and see what we think. This week's artist is 21 Pilots, an alternative hip-hop duo from Columbus, Ohio, consisting of vocalist Tyler Joseph and drummer Josh Dunn. The band was formed in 2009 and originally had three members, including Tyler. However, after leaving due to busy schedules, two of the band members were replaced by Josh Dunn, and the band became a duo. 21 Pilots have recorded four albums, and their most recent Blurry Face includes our song of the week, Stressed Out. The song discusses the stark contrast between the quote-unquote good old days of being a child and the seemingly never-ending stresses of being an adult, which I think that most people that are either just entering or in the midst of adulthood can really relate to. <laughs> Um, the music video is really simplistic and has childlike elements such as tricycles and Capri Sun. Uh, mixing unique raps with an indie style sound, Stressed Out has been climbing the charts and will easily get stuck in your head. So what did you guys think about this week's pick? For me, I really like this song. Um, it definitely is like you said, it describes, you know, what it's like to be facing, you know, adulthood at first is being a kid and young and you know not having a care in the world and, and that's something that uh, like you said a lot of people can relate to so I really like this song as far as the video um, I was not a fan of the video I would prefer to just listen to the song and that's basically all I'm going to say <laughs> yeah I also like this song a lot um, I'm more of a fan of the chorus the like not my favorite but um yeah I would 
prefer to listen just to the song rather than listen to it with the video, but it was a really good song. <laughs> Um, so I'm a huge fan of 21 Pilots. I've kind of been obsessed with their music lately. Um, I discovered them one day while listening to like a basic alternative, um, Apple music radio station. Um, and I kept getting their songs. I would, I would keep saying like, who's this? And it would, ke it would be them each time. So I was like, oh, they have really good music. Um, I really love this song. It's one of my favorites. And the thing that I like the most about their music is that none of their songs sound the same. Um, they have, I mean, they have this one that has kind of like a rap indie kind of vibe. They have another one that has more of like a pop rock vibe. Um, another one that has kind of an R&B vibe that actually reminded me of Radical Something, which is why I kind of got more into their music, although now I'm kind of seeing that it's not really anything like their music. But um, but yeah, I really, I really like them a lot. And, you know, this song basically describes everyone's situation, I think, just being stressed out and wanting to be a kid again and, you know, building a rocket ship and, and, and being in a treehouse and, you know, all those fun things. But um, we will, of course, link the video down below, and so be sure to check it out for yourself and let us know what you think. Okay, guys, that's our show. We hope you enjoyed this installment of Through the Screen. If you did, be sure to like down below and also subscribe to the channel. We also appreciate any feedback that you may have. We post new videos every week, and we'd love for you all to join us and tell your friends. Next week, we will be discussing a brand new topic, so you won't want to miss it. Until then, thanks for watching, stay informed, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!